No doubt you know about Roman numerals, the numbers the ancient Romans used. This video investigates where these numerals came from. So first, a quick review of what we know now as Roman numerals. I represents 1, V is 5, X is 10, L is 50, C 100, D 500, and M is 1000. And to make a number in Latin, you simply add together the appropriate numerals. So 666 is D, C, L, X, V, I. 500 plus 100 plus 50 plus 10 plus 5 plus 1. But these handy modern letters don't actually represent the real way the ancient Romans represented their numerals. The L actually is often written with a line extending to the left, too, or sometimes with these lines raised up in Roman times. The D had a horizontal bar in it often, and M wasn't actually used for a thousand until the Middle Ages, and then because the first letter in the Latin word for one thousand, Mila, was an M, which looked really similar to the symbol actually used in the time of Augustus, around 1 AD, something that looked like a circle with a vertical line through it. So hold on now, that's a lot different from what you were taught in grammar school. What's the origin of all of this? I mean, they couldn't have just made these things up out of thin air, right? Well, no. First, the Romans weren't the only ancient society to depict their numerals by using letters of the alphabet. The Greeks used their alphabet in order for their numbers. So alpha was 1, beta 2, gamma 3, etc. Iota was 10, and from here on, they went up by 10s. So kappa next in line was 20, lambda 30, etc., until we reach 100, which was rho. Sigma, next in line then, was 200, and so forth. Now, the Romans were indebted to the Greeks for many things, but their numeral system probably came before any major contact with Greek cities. So all this evidence shows us is that it's perfectly acceptable for numbers to be represented by letters. In fact, that was how ancient societies did it. So, that said, we can think of Roman numerals in one of two ways. We could start from the beginning and count up, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and at 5 we change letters to a V. Then 6, 7, 8, 9, and at 10 we again change letters to an X. So, when the Romans were creating their numeral system, did the 5, the V, come first, or did the 10, the X? Or we can put it this way, is the X, the 10, just two V's put together, or is the V half of an X? This may seem like an argument about the chicken or the egg, which one came first, but there's some actual archaeological proof that shows that one way is better than the other. First, the wrong theory. In ancient Rome, the one eye represents the finger, so two fingers would be two eyes, and so forth, until we get to five, which is the full hand. Here, the V is formed by stretching out the thumb with the four fingers closed together, and the X is formed from two hands. That sounds plausible, and, you know, in fact, I've been told that this is the case, but the argument breaks down when you wonder how the Romans got L for 50. And you could say that C100 represents the first letter of the Latin word for 100, centum, but now we have two different ways the numerals originated. And then what about the M, 1000, and D, 500? The M, which does stand for the first letter of the Latin word Mila, 1000, but in the time of Augustus, around 1 AD, the Romans didn't use the M for 1000. They used a circle with a line through it. And the D just doesn't make sense at all for 500. So we should remember Occam's razor, which, by the way, was originally posed in Latin. Num quam ponenda est pluralitas sine necessitate. You must never create multiple origins unless you have to. That is, we should opt for one origin rather than several different ones. The place to look to is just north of Rome with the Etruscans, the somewhat forgotten major civilization of Italy, just before Rome came to dominate the peninsula. At about the time of the development of Roman numerals, Etruscans had spread around Rome, and while Rome may not have been ruled by Etruscan kings, the evidence is pretty scanty on that popular idea, there was definitely a large cultural exchange between the two people. And the numbering system could have been one of those things either borrowed from the Etruscans or something they created together, you know, like a joint agreement on how to count because they were trading partners. So here's the simple and singular explanation, which is likely to be the correct one. Roman numerals are a decimal system, that is, they are based in tens, and the I, X, and C form the foundation of the numbering system. The V, L, and D are just halfway marks, literally, they are half of the numeral on the way to the next major one. 
and this idea is backed up by the evidence. So here it goes. The Etruscans used a tally mark system. So one was a line, two was two lines. We even do this today. And as the Etruscans were counting, they just put down another line. That is, until they reached the tenth mark. To separate this one out, and to make counting much easier, here they put two lines. This is called a second rank symbol because it now represents our two-digit number, 10. So when the Etruscans were writing their numerals, why bother writing the nine I's that come before the X, since you know that the X is the tenth one? And this is how numerals are born from counting. We can make 10 of these tens, and we reach 100. And now we need a third rank symbol. That's pretty easy. Let's put another hash mark. And we get something that looks like an asterisk. Half of 10 is 5, so the Etruscans literally split the symbol for 10 in half. There's some evidence that they used the bottom half, but we can also take the symbols and, you know, turn them upside down. You know, the ancients did crazy things like that in the early years of their alphabet. You know, that's how the Greeks made their alphabet and in their numbering systems. So V is literally half of the X. The symbol for 50 looks like a mostly closed umbrella, but hey, you know, let's just turn that upside down because you can and the Romans probably did. And you get something that looks like a flower without its flower head. Now the Romans eventually smashed down the leaves of the flower, cut off one side, and because it looks like an L, they made it like an L. The C for 100 is a much more difficult numeral to make. We know that the third rank three hashed asterisk looking symbol here eventually developed some curves to it. There is inscriptional evidence of that. So we can curve it even more, and just as we did with the L, cut off one side. It helps that C is also the first letter of the Latin word for 100, kentum, so that's probably where the C came from. And what about the thousand symbol, which eventually became the M for mille? In Etruscan, the symbol for 1000 was either a crosshairs, or the crosshairs rotated just 45 degrees. Inscriptions show that the rotated crosshairs, when written quickly, look like an X inside of two parentheses. So the top and bottom parts of the circle became open, and you know, it helps to know that the O actually took two strokes to make, since circles are really hard to inscribe on stones with just one mark. So this makes sense, and we have evidence that the Latins used this form for 1000. Then over time, the lines became connected into the infinity symbol, or horizontal eight. If we smush it just a tad, we get the symbol Augustus used for 1000. The M symbol came much later, maybe even as late as the Middle Ages, because, you know, you can kind of make an M out of this, and mille means 1,000 in Latin. The D for 500 could be half of the circle with the vertical line, or it could be the bottom half of the Etruscan crosshairs. And this explains why in early Latin the D sometimes had a horizontal bar in it. So who knew the origin of Roman numerals could be so fascinating, intricate, and yet simple? Like they say, these aren't the Roman numerals you first learned about, but these are the real Roman numerals.